because in other words, I don't need to use a lot of strength for MMA. All I need is to learn how to use <laughs> You hear that? Uh, I took that. It took like a week for me to finally let it out. Like, so MMA is like being in a relationship. I've been with MMA for six years and I realized that even after six years, if I become too comfortable, then the spark is gone. <laughs> If we just go in autopilot and we stop learning, we stop trying to be better, then we're gonna lose a lot of motivation. And then sometimes, even when we overtrain and we're just used to doing the same thing all over again with the same habits and not really learning and understanding the concepts and strategies, then eventually that gets boring and then yeah we lose a lot of motivation we just we're not improving like we should for this upcoming weeks i'm gonna take the time to make the necessary adjustments so that i can get better physically and mentally but the biggest adjustment right now is after i let it go is making sure that i learn what i missed and the things that i was missing the things that i was lacking so it's not just in the MMA fight that I need to adjust my mindset, it's just life in general. Where, like I talked about in the last video, it's just not allowing certain people to get in the way of my goals. And also, not paying attention to the things that don't really matter, you know? And in a sense that I can stop paying, I need to stop paying attention to the people that don't want to help me. The people that are just there because they just want to talk to me for the fuck of it. <laughs> or the people that are just wasting my time. You know, and so right now I'm taking the time to be more mindful of who I speak to, the people, the type of conversations that I'm having with certain people. Because honestly, it is true. Anything that we say and do with certain people and the things that we consume, it could be on social media, it could be with anybody that we speak to like it doesn't get in the fucking head and so i'm being more mindful now of who i'm talking to who i'm giving my energy to who i'm giving that attention to because a lot of people are just blood sucking vampires that take up our energy so i don't want to continue to do that right so that's one of the things that i i'm mindfully making sure that i continue to do so that i don't fall under the same thing all over again and then commit commit the same mistakes essentially so that's one and then i was also i was also thinking right because one thing that i did say in the last video was that you know i let toxic pe toxic people in my life right and i was like who the fuck is so toxic in my life i had started questioning right i was like who is so toxic in my life or like what is it but why am I allowing these people to get in my head, right? And then I realized that these people that I have allowed in my head, I put them on a pedestal. So I pretty much gave them that power because they're either someone that I grew up with or someone that I had a blood relation with or someone that I was just used to seeing. And so I put them in this category like, okay, they're very important to me. So I'm going to allow them to keep hurting me and I'm going to allow in, I'm going to allow them to influence me in a negative way just because they're them. And it shouldn't be like that. It should never be like, oh, just because you're family or just because you're a friend or just because my mom knows you or just because my friend knows you. Like it shouldn't or just because of your status, it should never be that and when we're about to spar with someone that has more experience sometimes we get this like feeling like oh shit you know they know more than i do so then we feel intimidated and it has happened to me but then you have to realize that those people are just as human as you are and so my my technique for this is just seeing them as normal human beings enough you are all of you beneath me i am a god you dull creature and I will not be bullied by that. No one has more value than you. Like, 
we're all human here we're not gods you know so there shouldn't be a reason why we should treat people differently based on their status based on on how they look based on who they are like it's always important to treat people with respect right so we are gonna be respectful to ourselves and then pe treat people with respect but then again if they're not being respectful to us then we don't have to deal with it so i was just thinking about that you know after the fight and then also seeing the people that were there for me because another thing that i see this is another thing that i that i'm adjusting in my brain right <laughs> because when i lost the fight i felt like i was gonna lose a lot of people and i felt like i was gonna lose some of my close friends Lily, Lily sucks. Lily sucks balls? No. Thank you. Lily, can you say something? Okay. Uh, a little bit louder. <laughs> I don't know what to do with my hands. Uh, what do you want me to say? <laughs> but then I, I... I don't know. You see, that came out of emotion because for me, I know that I have real friends and I have real people in my life. And so one loss in a fight does not mean that I, I'm worth any less. I didn't get my win, but that does not mean I'm worth any less. I know for a fact I've done a better job at being real with myself and being real with the people that I surround myself with. So there should be no fear of losing them because of one fight. <laughs> so physically, some of the adjustments that I need to make is goes back to the footwork. So after the two years of being recovered from the Achilles injury, I noticed that my calf is still not 100% there yet. And that's because the Achilles have healed, but then my calf is still not 100% strong. I've been overcompensating with my left foot because my Achilles is not my right foot. Um, and then my calf is a lot weaker on my right foot than my left foot. So there's that adjustment where I need to continue to grow that, that calf. It's like one of those things that, that that injury really did like affect me a lot. But it doesn't mean that I still can do the things that I want to do as long as I continue to make it stronger, you know, and just be patient with myself. So that's that. And so what happens with this, the calf being this weak, when I'm on my fighting stance and then I'm training for long periods of time, let's say like after the two hours of training, and then I'm gonna go jump into sparring. Like literally my calf is so tired that I'm not on my on my tiptoes or I'm not on my fighting stance like I'm supposed to. And so I'm not too light on my feet. And then when I'm striking, I'm not moving my feet like I'm supposed to, I'm not balanced. And then I'm flat footed. So what causes that is to lose, lose that explosiveness because I'm not shifting or I'm not pivoting like I'm supposed to. And so my hips are, are doing a lot of work, but then again, if I'm not putting my feet on the right place when I'm striking, then I'm gonna lose my balance. And then again, that's where I get hit and I, I either fall or like I'm not hitting like the right way or I'm taking too long to hit. And so that's where I'm, I'm making that adjustment, making sure that I continue with my proper footwork and my balance so that I can hit with purpose but another thing that i thought right because i thought i was like oh i'll probably i'm not feeling strong enough and that's because i usually spar with bigger people bigger guys and women and so because of that i sometimes feel like i'm not strong enough physically but it's knowing that i don't need to be super strong you know because i have the strength i just need to learn how to use my strength in the right places because 
because in other words, I don't need to use a lot of strength for MMA. All I need is to learn how to use that strength. It's like that's where they say use your use your advantages, use what you have. Like my me for me is my height. And then the same thing with my strength. I can use that for my advantage. But it's just putting that shit in my head, bro. So for the next upcoming weeks, I'm gonna be talking about that. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys like my I'm gonna be showing you exactly what I'm gonna be working on so that you are also aware that yeah I mean I'm, I'm not afraid like I said I'm not too ashamed to say the things that I'm lacking my weaknesses and stuff but then again I'm working on them and that's life <laughs> so as long as I continue to do that you know hopefully that helps you to and realize some things about yourself that you can also improve so yeah And last but not least, just so Taz has come up with Taz Knows on YouTube and podcast. So I ask you guys to go to Taz Knows on YouTube and subscribe so you can see what it's like to be in the mindset of an MMA coach, a martial artist, a student, and a human being. So he's gonna show his journey along with his students' journey and other guests on his YouTube and his podcast. Oh, and also I forgot. So I also have my Patreon. <laughs> so the Patreon is, uh, are the, the things that I don't post on Instagram and on YouTube. So if you guys want to see the behind the scenes, my daily affirmations, the some of the real life stuff that I, I go through, guys, go to patreon.com slash